guys welcome back to the mary boozers rc channel today it's the big day we're here with the e-flight draco mm -hmm. and it is absolutely beautiful and who's better to talk to the draco with than this gentleman right here if y'all don't know who he is please introduce yourself so I'm Jason Merkel. I'm the senior brand manager for uh, the E-Flight brand and some of our other uh, airplane brands at Horizon Hobby. Um, and yeah, this is a, a really big day, big uh, big announcement that day back in March. And then uh, hopefully you guys are seeing this video right on the coordinated launch day, the official release day, or AKA Draco Day, as some people are already calling it. Uh, there's a whole lot of people that are looking for getting, getting their hands on one of these. Um, and so we just wanna take a minute to talk a little bit about it overall, and give you guys some hints and tips, some things that you know, uh, Wes and I picked up along the way. Now having put one together, flown it for ourselves, and uh, you know, really, I think in the end, everyone's going to enjoy it. But there's a few little things that you know, maybe will help you right. guys enjoy it even more right. along the way. So, something I noticed right out of the box. I mean, the fit and finish on Draco is fantastic. I really didn't have to fight anything getting it put together. Yes. You guys, we've got the build video out today. Also, go check that out if you want. We did get it all assembled, but there really wasn't anything that was hard on this. It's it's a typical E-Flight plane where everything is, I mean, just pop it out of the box and put it together. <laughs> yeah, it goes together, fits well. Everything goes like, you know, the where it's supposed to go. And you don't have to fight anything. There's no alignment issues with a lot of things. You know, we'll talk a little bit about the leading edge slats. That's something that might alarm people, but it's nothing to be alarmed about. Uh, I think the biggest thing to point out is that you do need a little bit of glue. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people are, so used to and spoiled now by our e-flight so no glue coming yeah. out of the box and either <laughs> snapping together or screwing together you do need a little bit of glue just for the leading edge slats yep. just to install the antennas i know some guys might even modify that put some magnets on those which i would totally fully support but these uh, are metal they are on metal. here too they are metal that's so be something careful. that was a little different yeah don't poke yourself in the eye with one right. uh, but what's nice is if you were to put this uh, against something it won't break it won't off. break it's metal it'll snap back now you could break the base so you got to watch out for that but, but overall i think a lot of guys are going to use probably some glue to stick that in real quick again you could add some rare earth magnets that might help uh, but it's absolutely not necessary i think assembly time how long does it take you an hour if that yeah and that was me trying to film and put it together so yeah a guy that's not having to do what i was doing is probably going to get this one together in 45 minutes yeah so let me say the first thing and you probably encountered this uh the very first batch of dracos that are going to be in people's hands have the original version of the instruction manual which right. wasn't as up to date as the final version airplane so we made some changes to things so when you get your draco especially if you're getting it around uh draco day or release day do me a favor Put that printed manual to the side. Don't even open it, don't even use it. Go to our website, go to our, just horizonhobby.com, search for Draco, go to the Draco page, and on all of our product pages, there's a button, which is manuals. Yep. Click that, click to open the English version, the French version, whichever language you prefer, and that is the latest and greatest, most up-to-date manual. That manual If there's will be been revisions, mm -hmm. yeah, any of that. Actually, and we that, will link it down in the description oh, do. of this video, yeah, too. Yeah, please do. And again, so it's important that you guys know all of our airplanes, the printed manual that's in the first run has usually been updated by the time the product gets shipped into the market. And so it's always best, to, if you can, to go to our website and download the digital version every time. Sometimes the differences are very minor. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the differences, in, like in this case, are very major. And you can still build it based on the original manual. It's just not as accurate when it comes to like screw sizes, the number of screws, that kind of thing, or how the stab goes on, little things like that. Uh, so be sure to check that out. And then if you base your uh, kind of build on that and your video, I don't think most people are gonna have any trouble, but what are some other little hints and tips we can give them from along the way. So I know one you were telling me about is the elevator. Mm -hmm. Carrying your Draco. Yes, handling and your Draco. Handling your Draco. You yes. know, you want to pick it up from around here but not as much here. Yes, and I think you guys gotta be careful too with the leading edge slats get, in particular. Yeah. You know, these are slotted. They're fixed slotted, just like the full scale were, but if you pinch in the middle between the two hard points, you can crack this, break this, snap mm -hmm. out where you glued it in. So watch out there, but most importantly, don't lift it by the horizontal right. tail. You don't wanna be picking it up from here and holding, holding it, it vertically. Yes. Because so. when you put yours together, mm -hmm. one of the little slick things is the tail actually keys in with a button. Yep. And then, the two arms come up, clip in, and then it's all together. Yeah, but so the nice thing that, is if uh, you gotta put this clip. in the car, 
You could even pop the sun in off before. You could, and that was part of the reason we did it that way. And I know it's a relatively big airplane, but once you take off the wings, it's still pretty small, even right. with the stab on. Yeah, I don't see a lot of guys needing to. I don't to. see it, and so for that reason, we do have it on there, but we want you just to be aware to not hold it by that, because that mount is not made to have, you know, many pounds of force that way on it. Now, right. flying it, you'll never break you'll it. You'll never. It'll never come loose. It has the struts on there, which will keep it on the model, but if you happen to pick it up by the tail, we learned this the hard way, and you don't realize it, you might pop it out of the snap mount, and then you go and you fly, and the stab moves enough that you have nothing but down elevator, right. which, uh, hey, no if you want to land inverted that day, okay, you might be all right, but other than that, it's, it's not, it's not a, very a, conducive. Thing. Yeah, so, um, again, big taking the stab on and off, probably not practical for most people. If you're going to do it, make sure you have some ball link pliers, because that's right. what the, uh, the struts snap onto. Right. Also, the elevator linkage, you have to remove that to uh, take the tail off, but that's a nice little tidbit. You know, some guys might even want to glue that. Totally get that. If you want, if you feel more comfortable with that, it doesn't need it. We've flown the crap out of it. We've flown as hard as it can, full throttle straight down and pulled up and it doesn't come loose yep. so you don't have to worry about it but if you want to you could probably put some epoxy on there or you know something now another thing you had mentioned to me and, and mine had done it a little bit is some of these are coming out kind of a little bit yeah like this if they are just take your time putting it on they do straighten right out when you put them on the airplane mine was a little bit I just glued them one at a time and went down it and they were perfectly straight by the end. Yeah, some just, guys uh, countered that even with timbers. Right. And those are just white, they're not painted, so they're bowed a little bit sometimes because they're thin foam. Right. These are thin foam painted, and so that paint sometimes changes uh, mm -hmm. with humidity and different things, and so for that reason, your, your uh, leading edge slats might come out a little bowed. Don't be alarmed. Take your time gluing one at a time. Now, if they're more bowed, then uh, right if they come out and they're in half yeah, yeah there might be an issue let us know we'll replace them of course but uh, i do recommend using at minimum ca glue medium foam medium foam safe glue is uh, fine medium regular ca glue is fine you don't have to use foam safe right this is epo foam so you can use any ca you can use a whole bunch of other glues you can use epoxy you can use the uh, foam to foam that we recommend or you know foam tack if you do the foam tack route i think i worry a little bit it about takes a while to dry it off so it might too. be hard to keep that alignment so if your uh, leading edge slats are bowed i would recommend using that ca because right. you can work a little faster it's instant yeah relatively relatively, relatively speaking oh one thing i did learn lesson i learned the hard way I did it on one, but on the other, I didn't use um, a, a foam safe, so to speak, uh, um, accelerator. And so some accelerators are different kinds of, uh, of makeup, and it didn't damage the foam. That's not an issue. It's but it takes foam. paint off. Yeah. 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 Ran into that before myself. It, you know, everywhere that I spritzed it, you could see a whoop, a little. Yep. Yep. So watch out for that. If you don't have accelerator, that's okay, great. Don't use it then. If you do have accelerator, make sure it's foam safe or at least paint friendly, so mm -hmm. to speak. Uh, you know, I've had great luck with Bob Smith myself. Uh, there's different versions of Zap accelerator. Watch out, make sure you use the foam safe one so you can avoid that problem. Or just don't use accelerator at all and that's the best way to keep the finish as nice as possible. So anything else that you came across that seemed out of the ordinary or? Maybe? No, not, all, not for me. Uh, I will tell you there's plenty of room in the battery bay no matter whether you're gonna run a 4,000 all the way to a 7,000. 4,000 might be a little on the light side without adding weight, but 5,000 has been my sweet spot on this to 7,000. I've liked either one. 4,000 is, is okay. It's on the, the you know lighter no side, right. um, but I like the way it flies on that. It's really light. You can feel I'll the have to difference try it. between the four and the five. It doesn't seem like a big difference, but it is. It's noticeable. Obviously, when you're doing stole stuff and you're flying slow, you, right. can, you want the wing loading as light as possible. Right. 6S5000 is a sweet spot. I love the 7,000 though, because I can fly for 15 to 20 minutes. Mm, so you can fly a long time. It's, a, it. it's a very efficient airplane if you're not pushing it hard. Now, if you want to, this thing has plenty of power. Oh yeah, straight up, straight up. But we Fly and we'll probably is... put another video in right after this where we're oh, flying okay. it. So if I had to guess, but 5S is a very scale like power, almost exactly what the full scale had power to now, ratio. You can do 4S on you this can? now mm -hmm. too, right? So we haven't tried 4S yet. That's something I've been wanting to try. I do have some 4S 5000s. Those are nice. I think, I think that's could put less than that in there, but it's going to be tail heavy. Right. So you'd have to either add nose weight or just accept that it's a little bit, you know, more pitch sensitive. I just, I can't believe a plane of this size can fly on 4S though. Yeah. Because on 6S, well. it's a monster. I'd say on 4S, it's probably similar power to weight ratio. Uh, to the real uh, thing, uh, maybe. No, the real thing's more like the 5S. Yeah. The real, because he had the turboprop setup. That's true. I would say original Wilga is probably very similar power to weight ratio of the 4S then. So there's something that I think a lot of people need to watch out for, which is the CG. Just make sure that if you do switch between batteries, your elevator trim is going to change. So if you go from a 4S 5000 to a 6S 5000, you're going to probably have to add a little bit of up trim. 
Right. Not a big deal, but just something to watch out for. Uh, it's a nice flexible power system. We do have smart technology in there. So if you have the Binafly version with the 637TA receiver, and you do have then a compatible spectrum transmitter, you get all the smart telemetry, which yep. is really cool. You get so, motor RPM, you got motor current. You can then get the voltage of the whole battery, whether you use a smart battery, or a not smart battery, you get all the overall pack voltage, which is important because that's when you set, you can set your low voltage alert based on that. You can also set in your initial when you first plug in your battery, low voltage alert. This has got a lot of people over the years. You, know, you plug in, a, you, you mix yeah. up your batteries in the field. And then you plug it in and you go, ah, it's charged. Yeah, and you go to take off. Well, the nice thing about smart telemetry is it will it's gonna you, be like, as soon nope. as you plug it in, it says battery voltage too low, don't fly, don't right. fly. You can go, oh shoot, now I'll put in a fully charged battery. And then of course, again, while you're flying, yep. you can have that LVC kick in. See, I fly this with a timer, but almost every time I've gone up and flown it, especially if I'm doing like touch and goes and slow flying, my timer goes off way before my batteries mm -hmm. do. And the nice thing is I can ignore my timer and keep flying until that LVC or that low voltage alert comes on my transmitter, even before the LVC on the airplane comes on. So it's nice having that because then I can use more of the battery every time I go fly. I know a lot of guys say, I don't need telemetry. You don't need it. But when you have it, man, it's, it's nice. fun. It's nice. Yeah, we've been putting it in everything we've been building lately and we've been loving the smart technology so, so a couple quick points on the radio that we're gonna also have videos of our own on this and some other information on the web about this this is a six channel airplane so you've got your primary throttle control rudder control aileron and elevator course four channels you've got channel six for your flaps the light controller is plugged into channel five so if you want to have control of the lights anywhere from off to pretty much all of them on then you have to have that fifth channel assigned to that it is plugged in to the six channel receiver on channel five you can't change that now if you're using a seven or eight channel transmitter you can put reversing and safe select right. on those seventh and eighth channels but real quick if you have a six channel transmitter which a lot of people do and you want to use safe select you can combine it on channel five with the light controller the catch is when you turn your switch for safe select and AS3X and you know back and forth, it's gonna change your lights. Not a big deal, just something to be aware of. And this is one of the reasons I tell guys, nowadays buy a seven channel radio, buy an eight channel radio. Six is not enough all the time anymore. It's just not. Something to watch out for. Oh, cool. Pause for just a second. We'll be right back with you. So again, a six channel transmitter, it is enough to fly the airplane. You just will have that limitation of the lights being on the same channel that you have safe select on. Right. If you're using it, if you're not using safe select, then you don't need to worry about it. And then real quick, on the lights, there's seven modes. Basically, you've got from all the lights off, except for the, in the illuminated instrument panel, all the way to all the lights on. And so there's different travel settings you can use right. to get different flight modes or different light modes. And I put mine on the knob for my ix 12 That's IX12. the best because then you can rotate through whatever you want. But let's say you have it on a two position switch. You can pick two positions and you can adjust your travel so the two positions you get are you know anywhere in between the different seven modes. Same with a three position switch. Obviously, again, if you use safe select on a two position or three position switch, your lights are gonna change with that. So that's something to watch out for. We're gonna have some setup sheets that explain this in a little bit more detail for the people that need to combine them. If you want to use motor reversing, you have to have a seven channel transmitter. It's a six channel receiver on the Bind and Fly Basic right. version, but we use that seventh channel digitally. So if you have an NX6, which has mm -hmm. that seventh digital channel, right. if you have an NX8, a DX8, a DX8E, and above, you can use channel seven for reversing. You can't change that. Right. That is hard coded in the Bind and Fly Basic version, in the PMP version, in the ESC that's in there, the Smart 100 Amp ESC. Again, with the 637, you do get that. And you have to have a smart receiver to get that function as well. So now if you're saying, hey, I've got a seven channel radio, I've got an NX6, let's say, I want safe select. Well, you have a choice. You can either use the reversing on seven or you can use safe select on seven, one or the other, or you can use the reversing on seven and you can then also use the combined gear channel and uh, safe select on that channel five as well. On the, the lights in the, you know, in the um, right. safe select on channel five. So there's a lot of different options for six and seven, but this is exactly why I preach now buy an eight, eight. yeah an or higher or higher is the way to go not just for draco this is not an exception it's going to be for be everything coming standard forward standard where we have more airplanes with retracts flaps reversing and safe select that's going to be a thing and so you need eight light controllers to now that. and we have a light controller exactly so now you've got the need for that additional eighth channel so you can have everything separate so let's say you're a guy and you want lights on its own channel you want flaps on its own channel you want reversing on its own channel and you want Safe select on its own channel. That's where you need eight channels. So we're gonna have preloaded 
pre-programmed setups for all of our radios available, most of our radios available right. uh, on our website around the day that we release this. So we're gonna have a setup for the DX6E and the DX6, that's its own six channel setup, where channel five is the lights and it's combined potentially with Safe Select if you choose to do that. We'll have a seven channel setup. The, D, the NX6 and the DX7 will have their own setup, which has reversing on channel seven. And again, you can piggyback seven as, or sorry, channel five as lights and Safe Select if you want. We'll also have eight channel setups available as well. So the important thing to watch out for on our radio setups, by the way, uh, is that there are different files for DX radios, NX radios, and IX radios. Right. You can't just download an IX one and put it in a DX. You can't run a, download a DX one and put it in an NX. So we have different versions of files based on the type of transmitter you have. So watch out for that. And then again, the eight channel is definitely the way to go for a lot of reasons. And then real quick, on the motor reversing, you can reverse the motor at any throttle setting. It's almost instantaneous. Mm -hmm. uh, I use it on the ground for taxiing backward. I use it when I land and, and right stop. before I touch down to shorten my rollout and to stop it. I've not used it in flight and I don't recommend going full, thro full throttle straight down, full reversing. I've done it once. It's scary. There's no need. And that's not what it's made for. You know, Mike wouldn't do that with the full scale. This is not made to hover, you know, with the nose down and back up. I it did it happen. once just to try it, guys. If you do it, it's kind of scary. The plane becomes uncontrollable in the elevator. Yep, exactly. It, it literally just kind of does this, and you have no elevator authority. There's with no it, air so. going over the elevator, so you know it doesn't yeah, work that way. It's so. making a big cloud of dirty air yeah. in front of it. So and Mike did try that to a degree when he did that video with the uh, skydivers, the mm -hmm. guys that uh, the wingsuit guys that were hanging onto the airplane. He actually was using reverse thrust, and he said it was blanking out my elevator the whole time. So again, there's no reason to use it. That's not what the reversing nope. is for. The reversing is for those Stop it on the ground. Rollouts and back back it up. Yep. Again, you can play with it in the air if you want to. It's up to you. We've done it with the Ultimate and also then um, the Night Timber X. I've done full throttle in the air. It just makes a bunch of racket. It yep. slows things down. It's kind of fun. It's kind of it kind of. It's still, weird. There's just no no practical reason. Yeah, for there it. really isn't. So Outside if you want to do it, it's your airplane. Yep. yep. Outside of that, I've been using all the recommended throws, the yep. recommended flap travel. I you did. Could go I went. Work. I went exactly as the books did for my first one. I think it's like. Only like 20% down. Yes. It's not, you've got more in it. Yeah, you can have more if you want. It's up to you. Here's what we found if you have more flap travel, you start to lose elevator authority. So you start to dirty up the air going across there. So if you have two, let's say you have 90 degrees flat, right. you're going to have less elevator authority on approach. So if you're an experienced pilot, you can fly around that. Less experienced pilot, he's gonna have a hard time managing the elevator. May not have enough elevator to flare because he's not using the proper management of and throttle and airspeed and all that. Like I said, I did mine by the book and it was perfect. Yeah. It flies great that way. I don't see why somebody would want to variate from that, but if you want to. Personal preference. A personal lot of things preference, are personal I guess. preference. Let me just say, this is a general rule of thumb. I would start with the book though. Start with the book on everything. Yes. But things like flap travel and elevator compensation are, are personal preference to agree. They're not absolute. What we put in there is a starting point, yes. not a you have to or you will crash. Right. Also, center of gravity. Use in the range that we recommend, but you can go a little bit outside of that. Don't worry, if you're a little outside of that, go fly it. And it's important to me to- Always air on, on the side of the nose side heavy of for sure. than tail heavy But though. know that range Always. we give you is not like on the bleeding edge of it. Right. If you go one millimeter past, it's gonna crash. There's a, there's a buffer for right. sure. Also, CG's personal preference because you may prefer for the airplane to be nose heavy. So when you throttle back, it drops the nose. Or when you're inverted, you may want it more tail heavy so you don't have to have as much down elevator. There's the personal preference, a lot of personal preference in that. Also, control throws, exponential. Start with what we recommend, but do not not feel like you're obligated to use that all the and, time. And guys ask me this all the time on our videos. It's like, what did you use? What did you use? And I, well, you know, I use the same thing almost all the time, but it may not be what you like. Right. You know, on this airplane, I liked it all the way 100%. Yeah, all I the way like around. more travel. But, you know, when I hand it to the next guy, I dad flew it a little bit. I don't know, I can't remember. I think you didn't like the elevator quite as sensitive as it was. But it, it's, it's a very it's, sensitive elevator. It's, it's all in who's flying it at the time, guys. Yeah. So, you know, Start with the book. Always have rates is another thing I could say. I see guys all the time when I go to fly-ins that don't use rates. So take the time to set them up. Yeah. It, you know, if you take off and you go, oh my gosh, this is so sensitive. You flip a switch and it's a little less and that's all you got to do. It's not a hard thing to do. It's not. I, I highly recommend you do it on every airplane you do, no matter what. Let's go ahead and move the elevator up and show them how much elevator it's got. It, yeah, I mean, it has a very large. It has a very large. And it even has scoops right here. So I don't know if guys have noticed that. And I, we could probably get Lori to put it in, but there's scoops right here on the, the elevator. 
that actually pull air under it. I mean, it's it's really neat how they did this. The shock absorbing tail wheel. That's awesome. Yeah, and the shock absorbing mains. Shock absorbing mains, yeah. Yeah, it's really important to, to, to mention that it does have a very, very powerful rudder and elevator because they're very large. The ailerons are not so powerful because they're pretty small. Right. And that's why the aileron authority is not great. It doesn't roll particularly fast. It does fast. not. It can roll. It can do a roll, can. but sure it's can. not like not like what you're used to where to, oh, it, it reminds me of a timber. Original timber is very similar yes. to that. And also I would say the uh, the turbo timber is, is similar, somewhat similar. Um, but again, it's not made for aerobatics. Right. It can do rolls, it can do loops all day long. Oh yeah. It can fly inverted, but if you get inverted too slow and you get the nose up, yeah, it gets a little... it's really hard to push out. You have to roll out. Yep. So it's important if you're inverted, keep the speed up, keep the angle of attack low. And then if you have to, roll out, don't be alarmed. And, and keep in mind, it might be a little slow on the rollout, maybe add a little bit of rudder to kick it around. Oh, real quick note on that. In the Binafly basic version, we do have a built-in mix. Yes. When you move the ailerons, the rudder will also move. It's P51 a going ailerons. by, hang on a second. Yeah. Who doesn't love that sound though? That's a good sound. P51's always sound I'll good take that over the Texan any day. Oh yeah, I don't like the Texan sound. It's way too <laughs> loud for me, way too, uh, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so when you use the ailerons, the rudder actually has a mix built in. Yep, exactly. And we I noticed coordinate it. those yes. turns. It, if you didn't, you could, as a pilot, do it yourself. Right. It increases your workload. Right. You could add that mix yourself, but we went ahead and pre-programmed that into the Binafly Basic version. If you have a PMP, you may want to do that. But also, if you watch the Flight Talk videos that I did, I talk a little bit about this, how I'm using the rudder to bring the nose around. Just like if you're flying the full scale, you have to coordinate your turns, not only to make them look good, but also because it works better. It works better. It brings better. the nose it around rather nose. than having the, the tail drag and the wings doing this weird thing. It, it just doesn't look good, it doesn't work as well. So watch out for that. Outside of that, it's easy to fly, huh? It is. It, it's easy to land it, and I, I've liked it three-pointed. I've done it on the wheels. I've done it all the different ways you can with this airplane. It just doesn't. It lands. Yep. What this is built for is to land yep. and take off. And if you're a guy that likes doing touch and goes, you're gonna have a lot of fun with this yes, airplane. Yes, you will. I love doing touch and go with it. Grass, whatever. Grass, rocks. Rocks, dirt, <laughs> pavement. I will say this, couple couple of tips on landing. Um, you know, when you see that world famous, you know, the photo of, of Mike Dragon. It's hard to put wheel. the tail wheel down first. Yes, you can. You need wind. Mike has said that, that is, there's a very small window where he can do that and beyond or below, it doesn't work right. The airplane gets tippy and rocky. Right. RC model's a similar way. I don't recommend trying this your first couple of times. I strongly recommend if you have some wind, that's okay. Maybe just try to touch it down and plop onto the mains. Don't try to drag it nose high. It doesn't quite work that way. So yeah. watch out for that. I oh. tried it, yeah. And, and I will say, I really had a hard time hitting that tail wheel first. Yeah, and I also would say that three three point is the way to go on this airplane if you can. If you do a wheel landing on pavement, it has a tendency to bounce it will on bounce, pavement. Exactly. So we went ahead and balanced the spring rate and the hardness of the tires to make it work good on a lot of surfaces, but it's not optimized for pavement in particular. It will work. It fine. likes grass. Is it what loves it really grass. Likes. It loves rocky surfaces. It loves things that are uneven and yep. uh, inconsistent. But if it's a nice hard runway. Just plop it down three point, or not plop it, but you know, set it down nice and easy, or just land, you know, real easy on easy. the mains. If you come in too hot and you bounce it, be careful. Don't let it keep bouncing. If anything, punch it and go around. Yeah, it's got Don't enough power you can punch much. it and go exactly. There's Straight no up. Reason because you're going to run the risk of it nosing over and hitting your four blade prop, and a four blade prop is way easier to break than a two blade prop. So it's one, something to watch out for. And these props, you know, they're relatively cheap. They're 15 bucks, but it's special for this model. So you're not going to just be able to go over to the other box and grab another prop and put it on to fly the right. rest of the day. So watch out for that. Uh, other than that, again, not hard to land, not hard to take off. However, not a beginner's airplane. No. Not I would say maybe third or fourth on this one. Yeah, we recommend if you're never flown before uh, the Hobby Zone Carbon Cub first. Hobby right. Zone Carbon Cub S2 is great first step. Timber is a great second step. This could be a third model for a lot of guys. It's not that it's hard to fly. It's just that it's big. It's big. It's, it's kind of expensive to it's fix. Expensive. Exactly. It looks so beautiful. Who wants to? Who wants to tear it up? Yeah. Point? I mean. Jason, yeah. I want to make one thing you guys hit on real quick there, but if you are afraid of the wind, mm -hmm. this plane is not. This yes. plane yes. likes wind. Yeah. yeah. And it the more good. wind you have, the better. It is. The more fun it is, it really. Is more fun it really is. Get that over the that's people. a great point because it is a big airplane, and that's one of the reasons we made it big because bigger flies better, especially in the wind. For sure. Well, and and like we have friends that live out in Texas, and when we lived in Texas, I mean the wind would be a nice day was 15 miles an hour, 
And so, you know, they're always like, why are y'all complaining when it's five miles an hour? Well, here's yeah. a plane that you don't have to worry about it and you can get it out there and fly it even on those kind of days. Yep, exactly. And you're gonna have a good it's, time. It's more fun, honestly. It is. I like flying on a calm evening, it's no problem. But man, when there's just even a five mile per hour headwind, you know, a 10 or 15. This oh, one can come in so much so lower. It's so cool to just come in and just- I've been waiting. Down. I, want, I want about a 25 mile an hour day to try it. You'll get it, I'm sure. I will. You'll get, it, you'll get it. So yeah, outside of that, guys, a lot of great stuff on this model. Uh, be sure to check out our website because we've got a lot For of sure. close-up photos, of course. Real quick on uh, people that are waiting on their pre-orders. Obviously, the first day was um, unbelievable. You guys may have heard this. We sold out of the first shipments within the first couple hours of the day. Those are a lot of the models that are going to go out on the 23rd in particular. We are continuing to get shipments in, and they're going to go out over the next couple of months. They'll, they'll be small batches, and they're going to go out in the order in which we receive orders whether it was a hobby shop order or a consumer that ordered from us directly you're all in the same line if you cancel your order you're gonna lose your spot so you're not gonna get charged until we ship and so if you cancel your order and you come back to the list you're gonna be way down at the bottom at this point if you've pre-ordered after the first or second day you're probably a couple months out but you're in line so don't lose F15. your spot hang on one second so again, I think it's important that everybody knows to uh, you know be patient with us guys. This was we knew it was going to be big, but it's been bigger than we ever expected, and we're going to have some you know months to catch up. But hopefully by the end of this year, we're going to catch up all the way. Uh, but again, if you want one sooner than later, keep your name on the list. Otherwise, you're going to lose your spot, and it's just going to put you deeper and deeper down into things. Uh, and so also work with your hobby shop. A lot of them are going to be getting some multiples in, and they may not all be spoken for. So it's possible you might be able to find one even at an off the beaten path hobby shop maybe somewhere that you're not normally shopping at uh, be sure to support your local hobby shops whenever you can also we'll have parts in stock right at launch and we're going to continue to try and keep up with those we've already extra we ordered extra props now uh, some guys have been buying those just as a memento piece <laughs> so we've noticed that uh, we appreciate that we're going to buy some extra props so more people can do that and also so we have plenty of the stock props in stock uh yeah a lot of great stuff on this airplane we're really excited it's finally here and Man. about time for you guys to enjoy it too. Uh, I'm stoked. So guys, if you haven't thought about getting one, I hope you have after this video. Links are down below the video. And uh, get out there and fly with your friends. I'm out here with Papa, Lori, Jason today, and we are hanging out with our friends. And we can't wait to see you in the next Mary Boozer channel video. Bye. Can't talk today. It's hot. We're going to see y'all later. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.